Hello and welcome to this video. Today we're going to continue with the shopping list and add a database to it. So we can add it shopping items to the database and make the list update according to what's inside the database. But before we start, we need to add some dependencies for our room to use the Android room. And these are the four uh, libraries. I'm going to write them in the comment in the description as well. And we're using this room version here that we need to add in our project Gradle file. So if we go inside here, write room version, and we're going to use 2.4.3. And we're also going to need a plugin here, which is used for Kotlin. And we're going to write this ID Kotlin cat. And we press sync and yeah, this here we don't need, so sorry, you can remove the last one there. And then we sync it and we're done. So there's something else we want to do in the main activity. So in the main screen, I want to add a column here and put the input inside here. And I want to move the shopping list below the input to make it so any variable that needs to go in the shopping list does not have to pass through the input. So when that's done, we're going to make a package, name it database, and we're going to create a new file. And it's going to be named app database, like so. And we're going to make this an abstract class. And how to use room to make this a database? We're going to write at database. I have another video on this. This is exactly the same. Um, that the only difference is that we're using uh, yet by Compose and Kotlin instead of Java. So if you haven't don't know how database works, please watch that video. I'm not going to explain everything. Um, but here the database needs something uh, called uh, an entity and it's what's going to be inside this database. So before we finish that, we need to create an entity. So we're going to create a new Kotlin data class and this is going to be named shopping item and this here to make this a uh, entity we just type at entity and we add some variables so what do we have in our shopping list we have uh, a name for the item and it's going to be a string we have the amount of the items we want to buy which is going to be an integer and we're also going to have a key so a key is something so the database know what is what inside the database, so it knows what to take out. And uh, I'm just going to make this an ID and real quick, it's going to be an ID, which is an integer and you're going to write primary key. And here you can write auto generated equals to true and it will handle everything with creating this ID here for you. And if we go back to the database, we need to write that our abstract class database extends the room database like so. And now here we need to add an entity and version. So our entities, this is an array if you have multiple entities, is going to be shopping item and the class of that and the version is going to be equal to zero. So now we need to create an instance of this database. So I'm going to write private late init bar instance. So we, this is to make sure that we only have one instance of the database in the app because if we have multiple instances then we might have one database with some items and another database with other items. So I'm going to make a function get database and we need the context here. This is going to return our new database. I'm going to make this synchronize so we don't accidentally create multiple instances of this. So we're going to write in a lambda expression that if uh, oh yeah uh, this is going to be the app database class java like so uh, or well i thought sing going to do this again probably this is misspelling synchronized app database class dot java 
like so and if um, our instance is not initialized which is uh, something you can do on late init so if our database is not initialized we do not have a database we're gonna create a new database using the room database builder and we start off by adding the context of the database and what kind of database do we want to create we want to create our database here and the name of the database I'm just going to write database name it's not that important here if you don't have multiple of them and there's something called migration so if you update the database for example you add a new variable or whatever then you need to migrate the data but in this video I'm not going to show that so if you make a new version of the database we're just going to destroy the old database and create a new one and build it and here we return our instance so now we can get a new database if we don't have one now we need to somehow make queries to the database to know what items we want to get and what we want to go put inside and in room you do that by using something called a DAO so we're going to create a shopping DAO and to make this a DAO we just write DAO and this is going to be an interface import this and uh, we're going to start off with a method that's called uh, function get all items and we want this to return a flow of a list with our shopping items import flow and now we make a query here so this is SQL so we want to select everything so we want to select everything from our shopping item and this will automatically find the shopping item because we had made the entity uh, annotation on the, that and next we want to have a insert so because we want to insert items and I'm gonna make, write this just to make sure so if we try to replace an item with the same kind of uh, ID we just replace it otherwise it will crash so we're going to insert items it's going to be a varg, so you can add multiple of them, and it's going to be a shopping item, shopping item. And uh, this is what we're going to start with. Uh, so now I'm going to try to implement a MVVM architecture on this. So you want to have all the logic and all the sortings and whatever as far away from the UI, which is our main activity you don't want to make do logic here sort and remove and stuff like that from the data on the database so we're going to start off by making a repository I'm going to name this shopping repository and this repository is going to take an argument which is going to be our database so app database we also need to go quickly into us inside the database here to make sure we can get the DAO so we're going to have an abstract abstract function uh, shopping DAO which is going to be our shopping DAO that's all so we go back to the repository and we create a function this is going to be a suspended function which uh, I'm not going to go into details of that here but it pretty much makes sure that we can uh, use coroutines to make it not block the UI thread when we're doing those background jobs to get our data so we're going to make a function called add item and of course we're gonna have a shopping item here and I'm going to use a coroutine to make this job and uh, so I said I won't go into details but coroutines are pretty much like an uh, asynchronic job making this in the background not stopping the app from working while this is happening so well inside this coroutine we want to add the item to our database so we call our database and uh, we write shopping DAO dot insert items and the shopping item and now we also need a function to get our items so you're going to write val shopping and we can write shopping items is equal to flow uh, 
which is similar to uh, live data, but it's something you want to use when you use, it's much easier to use flow when you're using Jetpack Compose because it supports it way easier with the flow. And uh, going to be a list of shopping item. And this is equal to our database dot shopping DAO dot get all items. Let's see here, uh, flow. Ah, so yeah, like this. So now we can get our items and we can add our items. And uh, oh, we're almost there, but we're going to create a view model. And uh, this is going to be shopping view model. And this is what's going to be inside the activity to make everything keep the states uh, of the data so it doesn't get removed or uh, if you close the app and open it, it's going to still be there. So this shopping, uh, shopping view model is going to take an application and it's going to be a Android view model which takes in an application. And now we need to create our repository. So we make a shopping repository. This is equal to our um, shopping repository, uh, which takes in a database. So we're going to get the database, and this database takes in the application. And we create a variable like in the repository um, shopping items, and it's equal to our repository dot shopping items and that's all. Now we need to make a function uh, add shopping item and of course we're going to take in a shopping item. Uh, I'm going to use a coroutine but here you write view model scope to use the coroutine in this view models scope and you write launch and then as before with context dispatcher.io animal uh, shopping repository dot add item shopping item and that's all so now we need to implement this to our ui and the main activity so in the main activity underneath set content we're going to create a view model uh, by view models and what view model are, do you want to create we want to create our shopping view model and you can read more about this. It's an extension uh, instead of having a late init var that is, it creates the view model when it's ready. Um, like that. And here we can create variables from this view model. So we're going to create shopping items by view model dot shopping items. And we're going to collect this as a state. So every time the database is updated and a new item is put in it, this is going to update the state in the view model and the view model is going to put that inside the shopping items. And we need to have an initial initial um, var variable for this. And it needs to be the same that you're getting as a return, so it's going to make it an empty list. So before we have retrieved everything from the database, it's just going to be empty. So inside the main screen here, we want to right that we want to get shopping items which is going to be a list of shopping item and in here we just write shopping items is equal to shopping items and uh, inside our shopping list we do the same shopping items is a list of shopping item now we can remove this temporary list. We add this here. And now it is a shopping item. So we need to write it.name. And in here we add the shopping items. And in here we can just write list of. So the previous empty. You can add the temporary list here if you want to. And we can try to run this. see we've got the crash let's see what it says uh, version must be bigger than one ah, so we wrote version zero and it needs to be version one pretty silly mistake but let's fix that quickly and you can see we got another room verify it looks like we changed the scheme but forgot to update the version ah so there's been a bit of a mess so whenever you update your entities 
uh, that you have inside here or you add another entity you need to bump up the version and make a migration so i'm just gonna bump that up because yeah the version one got a bit messed up since I started with version two. And as you can see now, we have the shopping list and we don't have anything in here since it, we don't have any data in our database. And uh, to fix that, we need to make so something happens when we click on this button that says add product. And to do that, we are going to make a callback. So we need to add the view model that add item inside here. And to do that, we need to have that as a input here and it's going to be on add item click. And this is going to be a unit. And inside here, we want to have a callback to what, what we're putting inside the database and that's going to be a shopping item. So inside here, we write on item click and we need to create a shopping item. So we write shopping item and the name is item name and the amount is the amount that we have here from our text fields. So uh, let's see, no value put in for ID and that's not what we want. So this is going to be a pri private val. Ah, oh, no, because yeah, we write that it starts at zero because if this has an initial value, we don't need to add an initial value here like so. And we need to have this same callback here to put it inside here. And here we write uh, on add item click equals to view model dot shopping items. But we also need to make this a lambda expression so we can make have the callback item here. So we write shopping item arrow. And here we put in uh, here is it should be dot add shopping item and in here we add the item. So this item is what we are creating in here that is going to be returned. And in the preview, we just write empty bracket like that. So it works to preview it still. And let's see if this works. So I want to buy some pizza, let's say 10 pizzas. I add a product, it's inside the database. Can add multiple pizzas. I want to buy a carrot. I want to have one carrot. And yeah, as you can see, it's still there. And if we have multiple, we can scroll. And if I restart the app, the data will still be inside here in the database unless you remove the database. So that's it for this video. In the next one, I'm going to add how to click on these items and get that specific information uh, from these cards on the next view. Because you want to click on a carrot and maybe you have written a note or how you want to see how many of the carrots you want to buy. You could also add it here, of course, but I'm going to add that for the sake of it. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching this video and see you in the next one.